Greetings everyone and welcome to No BS Baking. You got JP here. Now today I want to talk a little bit about yeast food and nutrients as part of my What's in Your Bread series. So let's start off by saying yeasts have two main uses in food production, baking and making al alcoholic beverages. And they've been used as we all know since ancient times. Yeast is a single cell organism which like us needs food, warmth and moisture to thrive. In this video, we'll talk about food and supplements yeast requires for health, longevity, and optimal baking performance. So what is yeast food? Yeast nutrients or yeast food refers to a group of ingredients which exist naturally in dough or grains or added to support and optimize yeast activity and fermentation. Generally, they are categorized as fermentable sugars, vitamins, minerals, carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and amino acids. Fermentable sugars are usually created by enzymes reacting with complex carbohydrates such as starch and simple carbohydrates like sugar. Fermentable sugar primarily provides the sustenance or the main food necessary for yeast to grow and perform properly. The sugar that yeast grooves on are created by enzymes reacting with complex carbohydrates such as starch and simple carbohydrates like sugar. Now, don't get confused between a simple carbohydrate and a complex sugar. Uh, so if you can see, take a look in this diagram down here, you see that amylase enzymes react with the starch, they convert that to maltose. Maltose is a disaccharide, like lactose and sucrose. So it is not as preferable to yeast as a monosaccharide. And so ultimately, uh, the maltase enzyme comes in and converts that maltose down to a simple sugar, a monosaccharide, such as glucose or fructose, and that is what yeast loves. As with humans, vitamins are necessary for overall yeast health. Yeasts do need a number of vitamins to make them be able to grow and multiply and create healthy fermentation. These include the full family of B vitamins, which I've listed here. Further, vitamins act as a critical cofactors for the enzymatic reactions and overall functionality of yeast. Now, yeast generally has these B vitamins available to it in any type of a dose system. And so, ultimately, what bakers are realizing is that by supplementing a little bit of extra B vitamins, they're able to produce better fermentation and a stronger rise. Now, although carbon is not actually added as a yeast food, carbon is the core components of carbohydrates which is an essential component in yeast metabolism. Besides the natural starches in flour, which are broken down by bacteria as well as various enzymes, carbohydrates can be provided through sugar additions, but typically come from malt as maltose and other sugars such as glucose, sucrose, and fructose. Oxygen. Although yeast can grow with or without oxygen, yeast will reproduce at a much faster rate with oxygen than without. This ensures an adequate population in a much shorter period of time for good fermentation. In efforts of being thorough, I've included nitrogen in here. In nitrogen, oxygen, carbon, they're not actually added into yeast food. Um, however, they're present in the proteins and the peptides and the amino acids uh, within yeast and flour and ultimately are essential to yeast growth and yeast metabolism. So just thought I'd put that in there. And finally, amino acids, just to completely beat this section to death. The amino acids aid in the fermentation process by improving the growth and health of yeast, resulting in higher ethanol production and ultimately giving you all the wonderful flavors and aromas that you want. Calcium carbonate is common to see on bakery product labels across a broad spectrum of items. 
A vast majority of this ingredient for food application is obtained from marble stones, and another natural source of this ingredient is eggshells. Now, these sources are promoted as good dietary calcium supplements. Now, besides the um, benefits that I've listed here, the conditioning, leavening, yeast nutrient, etc., the influence of calcium and magnesium ions increases the resistance to dehydration in yeast. Like humans, if dehydration occur occurs, your body doesn't have enough water and other fluids to carry out its normal functions. Yeast is affected similarly. And therefore, calcium carbonate falls into the category of a yeast food. Now, another very common ingredient you'll see on your bakery product label is ammonium sulfate. Ammonium sulfate increases the stress tolerance of yeast cells, improves metabolism, and has been shown to lengthen the lifespan of yeast and ultimately give you better performance for a longer period of time. It's also used as, as an acidity regulator in flours and in bread or bakery products. Diastatic malt is made mainly from grains that contain diastase. First of all, the term diastase refers to a group of enzymes that break down starch into sugar. The starch degrading enzyme contributing to this process are alpha amylase, beta amylase, and, uh, and a few others. Through the action of these enzymes, fermentable sugars are available more quickly for yeast to feed on providing strong and faster rise. Diastatic malt is added to bread formulations to optimize enzyme activity for improved fermentation time and is commonly used in baking as a sweetener and flavor complement as well. You could find both diastatic malt and non-diastatic malt listed on many bakery items. Diastatic malt is either listed separately or grouped as a natural dough conditioner often indicated by brackets around it with additional supplements such as vitamins included within those brackets. Now, non-diastatic malt provides all of the flavor and crust coloring and crumb benefits without yeast performance benefits, and that's basically the difference. Now, we by no means have covered off every yeast food or nutrient that there is. There are many other chemical compounds that promote, promote yeast health, growth, and performance derived from natural sources as well as some that are made commercially. Chemical names do not always mean they are not healthy. Much of what we looked at in this video are from completely natural sources and translate as healthy supplements that promote growth and overall health in yeast and humans alike. Thank you for watching the video. If you liked what you saw, please give me a like and a subscribe. It really helps me out as I'm getting this channel going here. And be sure to check out some of the other videos that I have sitting right over here. Uh, we'll see you next time. No BS breaking.